So it's true. After years of wild speculation, crazy theories, and dubious findings, it's finally been confirmed. Megalodon, the greatest shark of all time, has been spotted in the waters of the South Atlantic. And now a group of researchers are preparing for the expedition of a lifetime. They'll need to locate, catch, and tag the ocean predator to further study its behavior. First of all, they need a fishing boat large enough to withstand the weight and lunge force of such a huge shark. At the moment, the only vessel close enough to what they need is O-Search, a former crabbing boat refurbished to catch and tag great white sharks. It's equipped with a sort of corral, a broad platform on the side which the crew loads caught sharks. These beasts are so massive that researchers have to counterbalance their boat with water when they haul a shark on board. But although great whites are the largest modern predatory sharks, they're still much smaller than the megalodon. A great white shark can grow up to 20 feet in length and weigh over 2 tons. The megalodon, on the other hand, reached 60 to 80 feet and weighed a whopping 50 tons. No fishing vessel can hold such a weight right now, so a different approach had to be devised. The researchers decided to follow the lead of their colleagues in Indonesia. Conservation International tags whale shark. These are the largest of the modern shark species. They weigh up to 10 tons. Since they feed on plankton, just like baleen whales, they're not a threat to humans, and they sometimes get caught in fishing nets. That's when fishers call on scientists to tag them. A team of divers gets down to the shark and places a satellite tag on its dorsal fin. Then the shark is let loose. The megalodon hunt is going to be different, though. Fossilized teeth of these gigantic predators reach the size of 7 inches, over 3 times larger than the teeth of great whites. Their weight also has to be taken into account. If the surviving meg somehow gets into a fishing net, it'll probably just tear it apart with its sheer mass, helping with its monstrous teeth. Industrial fishing nets are usually made of synthetic materials, such as nylon or polyester. In this particular case, something much sturdier has to be deployed. In the end, the scientist's choice fell on the common shark fishing practice – a drift gill net. It's a set of nets that catch fish by the gills, and they drift near the surface or in midwater, just where most sharks usually dwell. The megalodon doesn't like cold, so it won't dive too deep and will probably be closer to the surface where the water is warmer. The big and flexible net will entangle the shark, not letting it tear through and get away. There will also have to be a larger mesh size. The meg is massive and will get caught anyway, while smaller fish will swim through no problem. Next up is bait preparation. To attract smaller sharks, fishers usually catch their favorite prey. It could be anything from fish to crustaceans. To lure in the megalodon, researchers decide to catch a whole lot of tuna. It's among the largest Atlantic fish species. A big enough school of this fish will probably get the attention of a giant shark. Finally, there's a team of divers to prepare. The meg is by far the largest predator in the world, and approaching it will be a risky enterprise. The crew will have to get ready for a struggle. If the shark feels it can break free, it will try its best to do so. It takes several weeks of going with shark tagging teams to train the staff to act quickly and precisely. And at last, the crew is ready to go. The boat, aptly named the Mega Surge, is a 100-foot gill netter, a steel vessel packing over 250 tons of dead weight. There's nothing on board but the necessary equipment, the crew of 12 people, and provisions for the voyage. The boat departs from Cape Town in South Africa and goes straight west to where the Megalodon was spotted. After a full day of sailing, the researchers arrive to the spot. The weather is fine, the waters are clear, and the forecast says there shouldn't be any storms coming their way in the next few days. They drop the sea anchor to stay in place and prepare the net. It's hidden under the deck, and it takes half the hands on board to deploy it. When the net is down and one of its ends is attached to the stern, the mega search starts moving. The net goes on for a full mile. That should be enough for the big catch. Soon after they've deployed the net, the crew see another boat approaching. That's their hired fishers coming in with the bait. They've hauled a lot of tuna and picked the largest ones to lure the meg. The team drops several nets of their bait on both sides of the gill net. No matter which side the shark will approach from, it will certainly get entangled. And now, they have only to wait. 
As the night falls, only several hands remain on deck to watch the sea. Hours pass, and there's no movement in the net. The mesh is large enough for even the great whites to pass through. So if the net moves, the crew will know it's either a whale or the megalodon. The first night is uneventful, though. The net is still drifting as it had, and some of the crew went to check the bait. All still there. That's suspicious. Normally, other big predators would come by and try to eat such a tempting bit of food. But none came this night. It's as if they were afraid of something. That gives the scientists hope. If the ocean is so quiet, there should be something scaring off other predators. The second night comes, and begins just like the previous one, silent. But then, after a few hours, the lookouts notice strange movements of the gill net. It's shaking and thrashing, as if something big is in there, desperately trying to get out. The lookouts sound the alarm and wake everyone up. The most difficult part begins. The diving team set out in two light motorboats and seek the place where most of the shaking occurs. In a couple of minutes, they find it. The net is pulled taut. Something huge is caught in it. Still, they can't be quite sure it's their chase yet. The water is dark and they can't see anything. The divers have their gear on already, and the team leader gives the command to dive. And as they submerge, they see they've hit the jackpot. It is the megalodon. The enormous shark is at least 50 feet in length, and it's eaten through one of the bait nets. As it went to the second one, it got entangled in the gill net and was now struggling madly to get out. The net proved strong enough to keep it in, though, and has already swaddled the shark. It has nowhere to go but keeps trying to get away. The divers stay at a safe distance and wait. Normally, even great whites stop fighting and stay still when they realize they're trapped. And the luck is on the diver's side. The Meg finally stops thrashing. The divers carefully approach the shark from up and behind. It can sense them, but it doesn't move. As other divers prepare the tranquilizers just in case, the one with the satellite tag comes closer to the giant's back. Delicately, the diver places the tag on the shark's dorsal fin. It's self-attaching and can withstand a lot of pressure. The Meg doesn't react. The diver slowly backs away, and the rest come closer to do the last part of the task. Cut the net off the megalodon. The divers have underwater cutters ready. They consume oxygen from their tanks and can cut through metal, so the net is as easy as pie. Still, they go about carefully not to scare the monstrous shark. Quickly, they free both sides and go above to signal for the main boat to start tugging the net. The Meg is now entangled in a much smaller piece of net and is feeling freer. The divers swiftly move towards the boats but throw a last glance toward the beast. It's starting to throw off the net and is already halfway through. The team go up. Their job is done. The motorboats start off towards the fishing vessel. And as they go, the team see a huge dorsal fin appear above the water. A satellite tag is attached to it. The fin quickly chases the boats, and for a second the divers think it's over for them. But then it turns back and goes underwater. There's still tuna waiting for it. And now the scientists can finally learn more about the greatest ocean predator in history.